Hello and welcome to your July mid-month development update, where we bring you the latest technical progress and feature some of the people and projects building on Cardano. Coming up in today's show, we'll hear from Nigel about the ongoing Vasil testing on the Cardano testnet, along with a few updates from Kevin on what SPOs need to do ahead of the network upgrade. We'll also hear from the Cardano Foundation's integration support team on what they're doing to support exchanges who are preparing for the Vasil upgrade. Now, before we dive in, make sure to like, subscribe and hit that bell icon for all the latest Cardano content and news from the team here at IOG. So on July the 3rd, the IOG team successfully hard forked the Cardano testnet, an important step in the journey towards the Vasil upgrade on mainnet. Since then, and as we air now, projects from across the ecosystem, SPOs and exchanges are all hard at work testing and preparing. So let's hear the latest from Nigel and Kevin. So Nigel, how's it all going? We're getting there. I think that's the key message. We've been very cautious and that's, that's important. Um, and we've been keeping the community up to date with everything that we've been doing. So last week we did encounter an intermittent issue. So we wanted to make sure that was fixed. And as a result of having to, to, to fix that, we've then had to go through all our testing processes again. So as a result of, of doing all of that, we've now got to the point where we can then uh, release all the other downstream components. So where are we in terms of the hard fork? Well, if you split it between the dApps and the, the exchanges, it becomes a bit more easy to understand. So with the dApps, we're working closely with 12 of the major dApps that are currently running on main dApp. Eight out of those 12 have actually upgraded. So they've got everything to work. They've done all their regression testing. So that's all good. It's a tiny change for them. So we do expect them to be able to rerun their regressions quickly and to make sure that uh, all of their integration work then is ready for the half fork. With the exchanges, it's a different case. They can't um, upgrade until we've definitely given them the last set of all the different components. So once the other major components like DB Sync, Cardano Wallet and Rosetta are all there, then we basically start the clock on the exchanges. We need a certain amount of exchanges to have upgraded before we actually achieve the hard fork. Not all exchanges have to uh, upgrade before the hard fork, but we do need the majority of those that carry them, you know, at least 80% of the liquidity. And that just means as we cross the hard fork, any transactions po post the hard fork, there's, there's plenty of liquidity there for them to be uh, rolling through the network consistently and fine. So what are the next steps before we can trigger the hard fork and implement the full Vasil upgrade on the Cardano mainnet? The next steps, it's the same as, as, as I've just said in terms of making sure that we've got the majority of the dApps there that are running on mainnet. Um, we've got most of our exchanges there, certainly in terms of the, the major part of the liquidity. And also we, we check off all the other things that, that we've got as well. Um, so internally, We've got ticks and all boxes in terms of our QA testing. We've got no outstanding audit issues. And at this point, then we're ready to make sure that we are ready and coordinated to be able to do the mainnet hard fork. Once we've done the mainnet hard fork, then immediately everyone will be able to use all the Plutus version one functionality. And then one epoch later, we will release the Plutus version two cost model. And in that point, then people can start to use the Plutus version 2 changes in order to be able to build new transactions and new architectures to be able to utilize those new pieces of functionality. Kevin, how are things going with you? Hi, hi Tim. Yes, as, um, as Nigel says, we're doing a lot of testing and checking of the node on our internal and public test nets, the DevNet and the Cardano public test net. And as expected, the testing has shown up some issues that we've had to deal with. One of them that we felt was important was a user experience issue affecting uh, node version 135.0. Uh, the team identified the source of the issue very quickly. We've uh, fixed that and everyone has upgraded successfully to that on the DevNet and on the Cardano testnet. So what does the community need to do to prepare? So the community, Tim, as usual, needs to do nothing. Daedalus wallets are going to be upgraded with a new version of the node, as usual. Of course, the staple operators will need to upgrade uh, the nodes they're running to the recommended version 
prior to the hard fork. Um, keep your ears open for the recommendation from the team before you do the uh, upgrade. Make sure on, you're on the very latest version and, and all will go well. And we're communicating, of course, with exchanges and with other partners to make sure that they also do the upgrades. So for any developers who encounter any issues on the testnet, what should they do? If you find any issues uh, when running the node, please do tell us via the Cardano node GitHub page. Please flag the issue with the Vazel tag. Our team is paying attention to all of the issues that people raise. What we're then doing, of course, is to triage them. There's quite a lot of work to do as we're coming up to the hard fork. But rest assured that any issue that you raise is going to be uh, treated seriously, put into the backlog, and then processed as we are able to do that. And of course, it might be that uh, we can't process all of the issues uh, prior to the hard fork. Maybe there's some things which we think, yeah, this is a nice thing to do, but we won't have time to do that prior to the hard fork. So there will be future uh, node releases where we take on board uh, all of these comments, all, all of the uh, feature requests, all of the bug reports, and we deal with those uh, over time. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Exchanges play a vital role within the Cardano ecosystem, and they're getting ready for Vasil too. We asked Julie Fischola from the CF integration support team to tell us more about the work they do and what they're up to at the moment. Thank you very much, Tim. Uh, my name is Julie Fischola, and I'm the head of technical integrations at the Cardano Foundation. It's our responsibility in the CF to ensure that exchanges and third parties are aware and well educated of what we are sending out in the Paseo hard fork. Also, in order for this hard fork to happen properly, we need to ensure that exchanges and third parties are aware of the dates that we've agreed on internally. These dates are typically tentative because in a project development lifecycle, things change based on testing and other criteria. Once we decide on tentative dates, it's our responsibility in the CF to feed back that information to exchanges and third parties so they can start preparing in advance for the hard work. Once we have the node and downstream components available, the CF gives exchanges and third parties the, these details so they can connect to the environment and they can start testing based on their business as usual processes. During this phase of trying to, to identify issues and resolve them, we ensure that there is a four week minimum there for exchanges to test and third parties to test. Once this period is getting to a close, we then do a retrospective to see if there are any major issues on the network. We provide that information to exchanges so they can start upgrading before the hard fork occurs. Now, in order for this hard fork to go smoothly, we need to ensure that at least 70% or 80% of exchanges have upgraded their components. It's a very exciting time in the Cardano ecosystem. We have so many different projects being built, so many different projects migrating over, and concurrently, we're scaling the system to ensure that these projects thrive. Thanks for having me on the show, Tim. I look forward to the hard fork and the future of Cardano. Thank you very much. During June's Cardano 360, we heard from some of the projects helping test the network and their dApps in readiness for the Vasil upgrade. Charlie 3 is the first decentralized Oracle network for the Cardano blockchain. Let's hear more from them now. Hi, my name is Jonas and I work with Charlie 3 as their chief technology officer. At Charlie 3, we're building a decentralized Oracle specifically for Cardano to ensure that all the other projects getting started on Cardano have their data needs met as easily as possible. For those that don't know what an oracle is, we take off-chain data, or in other words, real-life data, such as the daily price of wheat, the current temperature in Boston, or the current stock price of Twitter, and we put that data on the blockchain. To accomplish this, we're doing it in a decentralized way, where multiple Charlie 3 nodes work together to put this data on the blockchain. Our oracle feeds then aggregate the individual pieces of data into a consensus truth, which other projects can then use. We're still digging into the new Vassal features, as we need to take advantage of several of them to really get the performance this hard fork offers. We're very happy that the hard fork is finally live on the testnet, 
and we're looking forward to putting our own testnet feeds live there next. We know which features will have the biggest impact on us, and I think those are also the ones that will have the biggest positive impact on the rest of the community. One of the most important features for us is CIP31, the reference UTXOs. For anyone who isn't familiar with it, this means that once data has been put on the blockchain, for example, the current stock price of Twitter, multiple transactions can use this piece of data at the same time without blocking each other. Without this, we're limited in how often the data can be used. But with the reference UTXOs, that limitation is removed and any number of transactions can use the same piece of data concurrently. Another important feature for us and many other projects as well is CIP33, the reference scripts. How this works is a bit technical, but to boil this down, this essentially means that projects will be able to make smaller, more efficient transactions, which will allow everyone to build cooler stuff with less technical limitations. If you're curious to find out more about us, please check us and our partners out at our webpage, charlie3.io, and feel free to chat with us on Telegram and Discord. Most importantly, if you know of any projects that haven't yet heard of Charlie, please remind them that we exist so that we can get in there and help as many projects as possible get the data that they need. So the Cardano community was out in full force at Consensus 2022, and dozens of projects joined us on the Cardano booth. Let's meet a few more of them now. I fell in love with the vision and, and mission of how Cardano is trying to create a better world. So I ended up quitting professional soccer to spend all my time in the Cardano ecosystem, Cardano community, and figure out you know, what to build um, to, so the community could benefit the most. And that's when we started building the Clarity Protocol, which is a no-code DAO tooling platform. So anyone can create a decentralized organization, um, set the governance rules, have on-chain proposal management, and manage the treasury. So super excited about what we're building. I think you talk to a lot of people with ideas, and they say, Oh, wouldn't it be so cool if you could, you know, put the supply chain on the blockchain? Wouldn't it be so cool if you could start a DAO that does this, that, or the other? But the thing is, it's on the Cardano blockchain right now. It's we're not competitive enough to be able to quickly, easily spin up a DAO, quickly, easily have people have an easy way to vote on and, and get involved in the DAO operations. So, especially as a non-technical person with, with a lot of ideas, we thought it was really important to embark on a journey to lower the barrier to entry in decentralized organizations on Cardano because we think, you know. There's so many different ideas and progress that can be made if people just had an easier way to, to start implementing them. With Project Catalyst, yes, we did get funding, but more so than anything, the most important part was the, the connections we made and, and the way we were able to build our team. From, you know, we were in a challenge, we, we put in a proposal for an idea we had, and then a bunch of you know, people passionate about the same thing had a similar proposal. We got to talking. And now we have just a way more capable team and, and we really have a clear path to launching this product. And right now, um, in a few weeks time, we'll be launching our community website. Um, we will be having DAO pitch competitions and you can vote for the winner of the pitch competition by getting our governance NFT. Uh, we will be airdropping that to all of the people in our Discord. So right now we're building a community of people that love DAOs and see the potential in them. You know, no matter what the use case is, and you know, there's a bunch of people talking about DAOs in our Discord and all these different ideas, and we're really just looking. So, how to get involved? Join our Discord, follow us on Twitter, um, and if you have any questions, always feel free to reach out. I'm Michael from DeFi Yield, and we are a uh, asset management dashboard which has recently integrated Cardano. We are kind of the first ones to allow you to track. Uh, all your assets on Cardano. We've integrated a bunch of the protocols and we plan on having everything integrated by the end of the month. So very excited to be here at Consensus. Obviously Cardano has like a massive community. Uh, so very, very cool to meet people in person. I've watched, you know, Charles for many, I don't know, few years or whatever and followed what's going on. And so it's really cool to be at a stage where we get to see actual traction in the project where real projects that have been working for a long time are actually operational. So our project really consists of two parts. One is managing all of your assets in one place so you can connect all your wallets and track what's going on with them, find out whether you're making money, losing money, what the best opportunities are, etc. And so on that side we're really heavily focused on making sure we have all the protocols integrated so that you only have to come to one place to get everything you need in the world of Web3. Uh, the other side of it is we have an automated smart contract audit process so people can keep themselves safe. And so, yeah, we're mainly heavily focused on integrating protocols, making sure all the top projects are integrated, doing lots of partnerships, and yeah. 
Yes, so uh, NFT Maker is essentially a platform to do anything with NFTs, from minting to trading to anything else. And it's really about infrastructure. So we are trying to be the provider of infrastructure for all the different NFT projects or projects that want to use NFTs in some sort of way out there. So we're really focusing not only on you know, 10,000 uh, profile picture NFT drops and stuff like that, but actually also trying to integrate real world use cases into the whole NFT scene. And um, yeah, and I'm trying to build something which uh, basically should be the foundation to, to do that at some point. One of the most interesting um, spaces that I've seen NFTs in is actually the real estate space. So what, what has been happening is that a lot of real estate companies are approaching me and are basically asking, okay, we, we have real estate, we want to democratize this, we want to give more people access, but how, how do we do that and how do NFTs fit into that? So what we're doing is we're actually talking with them, figuring out the strategy and then unfortunately it's a very long process, that's uh, why it's all taking so long, especially from, from the legal side. Um, but the end goal is basically just giving more people access into investing into real estate and um, just buying, for example, fractionalized ownership pieces of houses and stuff like that. So I think that's extremely exciting. The big challenge that crypto is currently facing is essentially that we have all these amazing projects building and we have a lot of DEXs and we have a lot of great technology. But uh, the one thing that is actually missing is real-world adoption. So we do not have many tools that just regular people are using. Uh, we don't have a single dApp that my grandma is using, you know, and that's, that's a problem. Everyone should be using crypto because crypto has the ability to make so many things better in the world. But it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of not there yet. So that's, that's currently, I think, where the whole industry is moving towards. And that's also what we are trying to do. Um, I think Cardano in general is doing a lot with RealFi and a lot of um, you know, real-world problems that are being tackled by multiple different Cardano projects and, and I'm trying that as well of course. Yeah. But we are getting there and basically we, we are starting and now um, it's all moving more towards you know, real applications that just make sense for everyone. So that's a wrap for this month's development update. Be sure to check out some of the latest content published on the IOG blog and Essential Cardano, including my recent post with an in-depth look at what to look forward to with the Vazel upgrade, including increased functionality, performance, scalability and interoperability. Plus, you can learn more about the new Cardano EVM sidechains, and there should be a link right there now. Plus, the latest in our series of looking at the research that powers the Cardano network, this time multi-asset support, stablecoins and friendly fees. We've included the other links below. That's it for today. See you later in July for Cardano 360.